That was an adventure <laughs> in crap when the stream falls apart and you have to do all kinds of crazy stuff to get back together. You like know a what? Backflip. Like a super backflip. And then proceed through the trials that the gods have prophesized for you. Yeah, well, we're good because we're back and that's all that matters. So let's and just fucking – let's just, just move past the bullshit and let's move on to where we were the last time we picked up. Um, as Pharos and Crevular close the door uh, to Rizarul's gang hideout, we shift back down through the uh, myriad hallways uh, down to level three, where we find Zeke, Talron, and Elabalthan finally getting to the bottom of these uh, stairs that they have traversed after their hour or so nap, uh, or rest, I should say. Um, so let me switch you guys now to the map which they currently sit, and uh, we'll, we'll move on from there. It is a Can dark ping map. us? Yes. Can you guys see? Here, I'll uh, shift ping. Yeah, please ping. Yeah. Now I can see us. <laughs> okay, now we can see. Now I know where we are. Well, no, I don't, but I can see us. All right, so there's where you guys are. What do you guys want to do? You see that the at the bottom of the staircase, this uh, hallway goes about, oh, another... 50 or 60 feet, and then seems to open up into a long hallway that goes left and right. Oh, joy. I love taste sections. All right, long so let's, uh, let's set some strategy and some ground rules before we decide to proceed. Unless any of you have some objections to that. Well, I am all on board with you checking for traps and taking no, point on this, no, my no, dear. No. We are all going to use perception. We're all going to... Oh, well, yeah. Perceive. Yeah. We're all going it's to just... creep very carefully. All right? And then when, well, it, comes to, when it comes to combat, hear me see, out. I got a problem here. Um, you see, it's about my armor. Um, you, you, you hear this? Saying as I, I walk around and you can actually hear the clanking of my armor. Okay. Well, you're just you going to be as careful as you can. Stay about. It, it's hard to be careful when I'm wearing heavy armor. Well, not heavy armor, but you know, clanky armor. You stay about thirty-five feet behind us. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna be very lonely. <laughs> no, just twenty. Okay, thirty feet. Thirty feet behind us. Just enough distance where we'll we'll try and work together to be stealthy. All right. Well, I like this when plan. It, when it comes to combat, all right. Here's here's the, here's the key. If we have to engage a combat, so here's the rule: we're going to avoid combat. One, like anything that we can do to avoid combat. Two, if we need to engage in combat, save your spells that do mass uh, effects. I don't know how to <laughs> how to talk about this. Area? Really. Are you talking about things area of effect? Things that cover large areas I'm of space? I'm speaking as Elbalfin, so Elbalfin. I know. Is not I'm asking. I'm asking Eldalfin, are you speaking about things that cover yes. a large area, like, say, the Wall of Fire? Yes. Okay, this, there we go. This stream not sponsored by Mass Effect. Let's try and, and <laughs> keep our, our... Let's try and keep our, our combat for Mass. Let's try to get those guys into a group so that you guys can be most effective when we are in combat. Also, I will tank, since there is no tank. I, I will fight. Um, what is a tank? Is this thing that rolls through your head. Tank? What is a tank? Don't interrupt me. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's try a group stealth. I'm I mean, down with that. I mean, I am both good, good with a glaive and I can cast magic. That's true. He is, I will stay as far out of the danger zone as possible. Because I don't do it. Not wearing... traps. Everybody will investigate. <laughs> everybody will use perception. Um, I am good with that. Let's yeah, see. I'm, let's I'm, see I'm, your initial perception rolls. And stealth well, roll. And stealth well, roll. I have. Well, okay. first of all, I have disadvantage on stealth. So you do indeed. <laughs> okay. I mean, oh, everybody's no. got the, everybody's got their ups and downs. <laughs> <laughs> you just see Elbalthus just like shaking his head. He's like, God damn it. Can't you guys be good at something? 
Hey, I got a better stealth roll. True. All right. So as Elbalthin sort of like, he's like, I'm going to show you how to do this. You just have to like put your hand to your ear and then move where no part of your body touches another part of your body as you move through the hallway. And Zeke is like, I got it, dude. And you don't really hear anything. And then Tauron takes just a single step forward and just goes, clank. Clank. (laughs) It's okay, hon. Just, you know. 30 feet. Don't tear (laughs) up anything. All right. All right. You guys move forward. And Albathan, you get to the uh, this sort of T section here, and you see that the corridor uh, moves. Uh, it moves to your east and to your west, and as it moves to the west, it seems to go down a little bit towards the, the south. Okay, Talron, come forward. All right. Clank, clank. Blank, blank, blank. <laughs> All right, so decision. So right or left? I'm gonna roll a one d four. Yep. So it's the best way to do it. All right, so left or right? That's right. Okay. All right, right it is. So you move off to the right. Albathan, you start to see these sort of strange niches in the walls as you move towards the uh, the eastern portion of this corridor. And you sort of start to feel this really weird chill. Um, I mean, it's no weirder or more unnatural than chills that you've felt before in cold places. But you start to look at the walls of this area that you've just entered. And the walls themselves are carved with images of mountains and a script that I don't believe you know. What languages do you know? I know, oh, one second. All of them. (laughs) Just click on uh, languages. Uh, I know celestial, common, draconic, elvish, goblin. It's a lot of languages, but unfortunately, this script is not one that you know. In fact, it looks very similar to the script that was above the doorway to the barrel house. Um, it's got sort of like strange, like uh, very polygonal looking letters and almost rune like. You can assume, based on the fact that you none of you knew it and that the only person who did was Pharaohs, was that these this is some kind of dwarvish script. Well, the voice on the way down said we were going into the dwarven city of something or other. The dwarven ruins of something. Yes. Cerebor or... I can't... Something that sounded like Lord of the Rings but wasn't. What is Lord of the Rings? (laughs) (laughs) Um, The walls, though, are marbled with veins of glittering minerals. You're not quite sure what they are. Ooh, can I figure it out with my gem book? You know, you probably could do a nature check with advantage because you have that gem book. Alrighty, I will do that. Is it good for me to step over? 18. Okay. Um, The minerals seem to be mostly sort of uh, not very valuable per se, um, but they are like flakes of mica limestone, um, just very, very pretty, uh, but essentially worthless uh, minerals that are inlaid into the actual walls themselves. But as you start to step closer to these strange sort of constructs in the walls, uh, you determine that they are actually tombs. Because inside of these inlaid walls, you see... um, Fragments of bone, very, very old and pitted metal armor. Um, some of them with tiny stone holes, sorry, holes uh, 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 drilled through the metal itself um, and through the bones as well, it seems. Um, yeah. 
drilled like they were injuries or drilled like they happened after the body's death. You can make a medicine check if you want, or a history check. Not sure which one of those is a better idea. Both are intelligence-based, so... Well, then they're both going to be bad. So... I'll make it history. Okay. Um, you're not sure. It's very strange. It's very odd to have bones with holes drilled through them. Hmm. Can't really make out why that would be. Um, the one thing that is interesting, though, is that each um, of these tombs uh, bear a symbol. Uh, drilled into the stone itself, a mountain with a strange gem at its heart. Is it a drawing? It's a drawing of the gem, not an actual, like a carving of the it's gem. Not an it's not an yeah, actual Yeah, exactly. It's not an actual gem. It's a carving of a mountain and the carving of a gem at its heart. Does the gem look familiar in any way? I mean, no more so than any other gem. Oh, okay. You said a strange gem. What's I didn't know there was strange, strange in that strange. it's like, I mean, it doesn't look strange. It's just that it, there is a gem at its heart, I would say. Hmm. Interesting. You know, Matt, I just I just realized that I can't see past forty feet. You should have dark vision, which gives you sixty feet, but dim exactly. light all the way out to sir. Let me double check here, but I'm pretty sure that you have your vision set correctly. Yeah, you have sixty feet of light. Uh, vision and f it turns dim after forty. That's correct. Yep, that's, no, that's, from, a, that's from her. That's me that I'm measuring. That's my. Can you not see where my arrow is? I cannot is? see. I cannot see this way. Let me check something. I cannot see north. Uh, oh, see you mean north. up this way? Something's casting. Oh, for me, something's casting a shadow. That's why I can't see. Uh, yeah, you can see. Let me try something here. Like, I can definitely not see as far as Sarah. Yeah, you know what? Let me just change it. I will do this. How about now? Oh. That should have changed it a little bit. How do I measure? Where's the snap to? Yeah, no, I'm check I'm checking your vision here, and actually you and Sarah have the exact same vision. Here. Yeah, I can see. Can I you cannot, see over there? I cannot see over there. That's dim light. That's correct. I, I can't see anything down there. I can't see anything past... This, that, right there, that 45 feet. That's as far as you can see? That's as far as I can see. Huh. I'm like looking around the corner over here. Like, okay. And all I see is, all I see is hallway. Yep, you that is go, correct. You, you, you should be able to see all the way down here, even with dim light. And oh, I yeah, see I from see. your vision, actually, about that. You I, do I, actually do see all the way down. I can't, dude. I'm checking your vision, buddy. I don't like to tell you. Let's keep going here, though. I wonder if it's your computer, your monitor. Is Maybe. it good for me to come, come yeah. over or no? Yeah, you're clunking yeah, you down the hallway. Come over here. <laughs> come clink, on down, bud. Clink, clink, clink. Should we, go oh, hey, see what's, what's... should we go see what's down this hallway, guys? I mean, what's with all those bars at the right side of this hall? I don't know. I'm going to poke my head right up here in the corner and take a look. They're the... tombs. Yeah, those are tombs. Those are the, the aforementioned... Are the... Yeah, oh, all of okay. these things are where these bones and pieces of metal... Gotcha. I'm gonna... I want to cast dancing, uh, my Dancing Light Walking Man okay. up, this fir up this first hallway to see okay. if it illuminates anything beyond the tomb. Okay. Um, you are able to see all the way down to hear uh, the lights sort of like flit down the hallway and they mm -hmm. you see that the lights sort of like hit a corner right right here. But beyond hey, that uh, they don't they don't showcase anything else. Okay, so there's a corner over there. So this is probably all connected somehow. Probably a very big room line. But... It actually is all connected. Hey, uh... if you run down the hallway you'll see it. Hey, hey Zeke. Hey what? I think I, I think I see some kind of uh, tunnel, like, at the end over there. Yeah, although you and Elbathan cannot see as far as Talron can. Now Talron is able to, with his special sight, to see all the way down past these tombs to a, some kind of a cave tunnel, that's I connecting have, to this. I have special eyes. Use your special eyes. What do you see? Your special. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, my then I brand. guess you should go check it out. I mean, my brand. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to go there... on ahead? Sure. Does it seem like there are any traps in this tomb? I haven't detected anything yet. Okay. But you're looking too, so. I am looking too. That's why I asked out loud. We're not stealthing, right? Or we good? <laughs> <laughs> <We're> st- <laughs> Is he clunk, clunk, clunk? Is that we're stealthing? We're not stealthing, right? I mean, right? Elbelton and I come are up, still technically come up, sneaking. Come up, come up, Clink, 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 clink. There's definitely something back here. Yeah, the the air seems to be the cool air. This sort of like strange chill seems to be emanating from inside this cave structure that you guys see. In front of you. Huh. See what look she fresh? has to reveal. Does this look just as like recently carved out as like the last few tunnels we've seen, or now? So, Zeke, stop there for a sec. Elbalthin, yep. you can stop exactly right next to Zeke as well. Um, yeah, because with say, your. What's over here? Yeah, exactly. Um, in the corner of your eye, you see it um, rotting in the corner of this cavern right here is a corpse. Um, or at a least. Corpse? Yeah, what's left of his face is sort of twisted into this silent scream. Yeah. That's creepy. I'm gonna check. I'm gonna go a little closer and check him out. What happened to him? Oh man. Let's try and identify how he died. Make a medicine yeah. check. Those of you who would like to determine. I wish I was proficient in that. None of us are. Just do it anyway. You have no idea, Belfin. Nope. And neither do 15. you, Scepter. But Z. Who's Scepter? I mean, Tower. Zeke, you take a look at this, and you see that there are these awful, grisly wounds that mar the corpse. You see that there are, you you take a look closer, and you see that there are bites all over this creature. You're not sure Mm -hmm. what it was, human, an elf, some kind of non But They look look like they came from a from a human or elf sized mouth, not like a giant monster mouth. It, the tell. bites look smaller than a uh, a large like maw. Uh, you see dried blood and viscera. But what's worse is you take a look at the neck of this individual and you see that the skin has actually peeled outward. Uh. Uh. As if something had emerged from within. Oh, that's just deeply unsettling. Is there anything else of note, like, on or around its body? So, wait, you're saying that something bursted out of his face? That kind of looks like it. Oh, great, face bursters. Yeah, I I don't know what that is, but okay, that just sounds really unpleasant. He has stuff. I mean, he has gear that seems to be near him. Can I check out his gear? Is there anything interesting in it? Uh, He has a coil of rope. Uh, about 30 feet long. He's That's got good. a small coin purse, which you haven't opened yet. He's got a dagger with some kind of weird substance, like some kind of green, dried substance coating it. Not quite sure what that check. is. That? Okay. Can I uh, check out that dagger? You want to see the dagger? I, I very gingerly hand the dagger yeah. to Tell Okay. Yeah, I'm going to like there's, exam- the, there, there's something on it, man, so be careful, because I don't know what that is. Yeah, I'm going to check out the fluid, dry fluid okay. on the dagger. Uh, make a nature check. Damn it. Yeah, you have no idea what the hell it is. Um, you also spy Zeke hanging around this individual's neck, right near where it, his neck seems to have burst out. A golden locket. I'm going to take the locket and open it. Okay. You open the locket. There seems to be an elven man's face on I kind of flash a tell about that. I'm like, I know that the likelihood is pretty much nil, but look familiar? Um, Elbalthin, make a history check. I mean, I was raised mainly by human beings. but This is true. <laughs> In fact, Zeke, if you want to, you can make a history check as well. Okay. I'm 
Unfortunately, Tal ran away. Ooh. Hey, whoa. Okay. <laughs> um, so <laughs> the good thing is that the DC was a 20. Um, so hey. unfortunately, Balthan, you don't recognize this individual, but uh, Zeke, you do. And so you're like, uh, let's see if this guy knows. And so he's you sort of like push it at Balthan. Balthan <laughs> sort of shakes his head. But Zeke's like, now the question is whether or not you want to reveal this, but you recognize the face in, in definitely. Um, this individual is a an elf, uh, and his name is Auron Silverleaf, and he seems to have been some kind of adventurer of relative renown who would frequent the Yawning Portal on occasion. Auron Silverleaf? That is correct. All right. I'm like, I, uh, I, I will disclose that information. I'm like, oh, okay. wait, I actually do know who this guy was. His name was... Or on Silverleaf, he used to hang out the portal sometimes. Apparently, he was pretty good at this shit, so we probably want to watch our backs. Well, clearly, hmm. this individual um, is, you take a closer look at it, and this individual is human. Hmm. Huh. This, this, this corpse is a human corpse. So why is it wearing a locket belonging to it with a picture of this elf? Is it female? Uh, is the corpse female? No, it's male. That actually is weird. I wonder. I'm going to slip the locket into my pouch and check out uh, the contents of his purse. Okay. You open up the purse. Uh, the purse eats your face. No, I'm just kidding. Um, it, <laughs> it's got <laughs> purse mimic. No, <laughs> oh, <good man. laughs> no. Although. God, that'd be a really good idea. Um, okay. Uh, no, the purse has three gold pieces and 12 silver pieces inside. All right. I'm going to take it. He doesn't need it anymore. Or so you think. Uh -huh. yeah, if he comes looking for it, I'll give it back. Oh, and and another thing oh, I wanted to ask one of you guys. Do you guys think that you could make my uniform look like something else? What Maybe you mean? Like just like an olive drab outfit without all the symbolism... Anybody can do that? Here? Um, I no. Think I'm an I'm an anthropologist. I. I, <laughs> that. I... Damn it, Jim! I'm, I'm an anthropologist, not a costume maker. No, unfortunately, that is not. I'm more of the to blow things up and scare people variety of magic and fixing stuff. I can fix it, but I can't change it. Unfortunately. How do you scare people? I mean, some people are scared just looking at me, but sometimes it requires just, you know, a little extra finesse, a booming of the voice, a flickering of the lights, a door flying open at an opportune moment. Or your eyes. Well, you know, or my eyes. Ooh, I can change those, and just for fun, I cast Thaumaturgy and turn my eyes bright red. Whoa. Oh. Well, Her eyes change from black to red. To change my uniform? No, Thaumaturgy only works on me. I mean... my Literally, the only thing I can change is my own eyes. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm going to cast a presentation and make it look like some coming out of those eyes. Make it look like what's coming out of my eyes? Like some smoke or like... Ooh. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what's happening, but it feels cool. All right, I'm going to take an educated guess here. I'm going to guess that whatever killed that guy uh, or whatever things killed that guy are living in that opposite direction. So, um, maybe I should have rolled a 1d2. What do you guys say about going back the other way and going down? Well... Um, I'm not gonna lie, it goes against my very nature to not go explore down that tunnel, but I also don't want to die today, so... Roll the d2, what? man. Or what do you say, Tauron? Uh, 1d2. One. I like how Where? we never ask him what they mean before he rolls. <laughs> yes. it, so he can pretty much just say whatever. He... Two face flips a coin. Hits. Well, one, one is left. Two is right. There you go. The higher number is right. The lower number is left. Left. Okay. All right. That's good to know. I'm well, glad I know your left? system. It's also a good question. Depends on which way you're facing. Well, if we're facing, if we're facing <laughs> down the hall, left is back. So going back then. <sighs> okay, let's go the other way then. Let's go the other way. Okay. I'm just going to, before I go, I'm going to kind of stare longingly down that tunnel. 
see if I can tell anything about what's happening down there. Uh, make a perception check. Holy, Holy shit. shit. Um, you can tell that the this is a very long tunnel. Um, that the sort of draft that seems to be wafting through this tunnel seems to indicate just from the sort of like fact that there is this just enormous echo that goes all the way back, that this tunnel seems to go back, twists and turns aside at least 100, maybe more feet. I'm going to relay that information. And say, just so you know, this tunnel is definitely very long, and I don't know where it goes. I don't know how I feel. But about we should going remember there. that it's here. I don't know how I feel about tight spaces. Okay, remembering. Give me one second. I can, I can remember. You won't. We're not sneaking again, are we? Yes, we are. <laughs> I mean, actually, we're technically still stealthed because we haven't done anything to de-stealth ourselves. This is true. Thirteen. Uh, or those of you who were never stealthy in the first place. <laughs> That's better than your two. You're trying harder. You're learning, Talrond. You're learning. You're doing it, Peter. You're Are doing, doing it. Again? Are we doing stealth again? I don't think we need to. Talrond did. Oh, hey, guys. There's another hallway over here. Oh, is there? Yeah, yeah come up. Per 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 oh. So as opposed to the sort of naturally hewn cavern, which you just were in, this seems very much uh, man-made. Right? Seems to go right. down to the southeast. Let's proceed together this time. There we go. Do we need to roll investigation again to keep checking out this hallway? Um, I will keep in mind your investigation rolls. Okay. At the end of this hallway, Balthan, it seems to split into two. And directly south, you can see some shapes, sort of like on all fours, slinking through what seem to be very large spider webs. And they seem to be sort of moving through these spider webs. Uh, to your direct southeast is another tunnel. This one seems to be a little bit more naturally hewn. Again, also lined with spider webs. So spiders, giant so spiders. Spiders. I don't know how I feel about spiders. Well, I, I can barely see something south of here. I can barely. See, what is that? Yeah, you have no idea what this is, Tauron. You can sort of see this sort of hulking shape just padding across the floor on all fours. Giant spiders, Tom. Yeah, Maybe? Something, something down or there. things that... Well, let's just go very slowly, very quietly. I see where it is. I'm sure that's a good idea. I mean, where else are we? We could just go oh, the other way. Definitely giant spiders. What the fuck are those things? See these things like they're just padding around the room. And huh. as you get closer, Elbath, and you realize these are not giant spiders. Giant spiders have multiple legs. These creatures are much more sort of hulking and sort of beast like than spiders. They have a matting of sort of whitish gray fur. Their faces are very uh, canine almost, but in a strange way, almost humanoid. Their eyes are lit from within with this sort of strange, unearthly white light and have these awful sort of maws of razor-sharp fangs. Okay, so can I see a handout of these things? Or? Uh, sure. I will show you what they look like. Uh, make a nature check, though. Actually, make an arcana check. Ooh, I will also do that because I can see. You can sort of I see mean, what these things are. Up here. Well. I can, can see I, them standing. Yeah, can I, oh, figures. Can I, you can too, tell me. Hey, there you go. Yeah, of all of the three of you, Talron, I think you probably know what these are the most. You might have seen things like this um, in the far reaches of the swamp, in 
which you once lived long, long ago. This was after the exile and, of course, what happened after. Um, but before you reached civilization, you'd see sort of small uh, bands of these creatures roaming through small caves in the swamp, um, but they were always sort of close to holes in the ground, almost as if they were subterranean creatures. Um, your tribe called them Quagoths. Quagoths. You say uh, to these other individuals who have no idea what they're called. But... All right, let's have a conversation about them back there. Okay. That's what these things look like. Uh, that's that's pleasant. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. Well, we can always look down the other hall. Yeah. Okay. Elbowlin's back over here. What's up? Where are you going, dude? You're in the walls again. <laughs> He's <laughs> stealthing so hard. So stealthy. <laughs> He's like, I am one with the wall. <laughs> okay, so we can proceed south, but we're definitely going to be engaged in combat with those things unless they have some sort of intelligence. So we could go to the right, uh, the left, um, which looks similar to what's going on down south. We may bunch and bump into a bunch more of those things. Well, let's go poke our heads quietly around a corner and see what's there. I mean, we have to move forward eventually. We can't run away from literally everything. As you walk into this room, you find Elbalthin. It's hard to move. You sort of try to move through these webs, and they're just sticking everywhere. Um, it's You can certainly move forward, but everywhere through this hallway, through this, I should say, through this uh, cavern, uh, cavernous tunnel, it's all just webs everywhere. Okay, so spiders, poison. Uh, let's just, I mean, I'm not, I'm just trying to get us to Skullport. So let's mark these spots. We can come back to them when we, we have a better strategy. But for now, I, I think we should just proceed the way that we came in and just go the opposite. Try the other hallway? Yeah. We're going to go right. all the way back. I mean, we just got to go through the room of dead people again. It's fine. At least we know what's over. Oh, joy, dead people. Hang on. Clink, clink, clink. Not so clinky. More like plink, plink, plink. Plink. Not clank, but plink. Well, it's better than plinko machines. <laughs> what's a plinko machine? I... Uh, just some weird fancy wording I heard while roaming around like a lost child. Where's Zeke? I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm sorry, I was dropping the spider <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> Where'd you go? Are you all the way back at the beginning of the room again? Yeah. Okay. I'm on my way. Here she comes. Here she Okay. Hi guys. Hi. Sorry. How are you doing? Oh, fine, you know, just sneaking around a dungeon with my new friend. Oh, normal hallway. We can proceed. <laughs> Define normal. Dungeon normal. <laughs> yeah, that... Yeah, that... Yeah. The hallway seems to extend pretty far down, and it's all... Forever. Just, just like the... The hallways that you remember back on level two, they sort of go down and then make a sharp right or sharp left. Who designed this place? Oh, wait, dwarves. Yeah. Very dwarves angular. Dwarves. About the, when you reach the end of that corridor, you see that this new section is very much sort of almost hewn from the rock itself, very unlike the, the, the tunnel that, that you currently stand in. It's very much more sort of natural formations. Okay. okay, so no matter what, there's always gonna be fresh tunnels. Yeah, let's just see what right. awaits at the end of this one. Better than spiders. Shh, don't say things like that out loud. Oh, wait. What's this stuff? Rubble. Yeah. That's definitely rocks, Elbathan. Yeah, 
it's funny because you look at these places, these sort of structures, and they don't look like they are naturally formed. They look like they are sort of ruins of buildings. Oh, that's interesting. This is this right here, a little alcove. Which ping? What you're talking about? Right, right below me, right here. Yeah, it looks like it's it, it's it's actually sort of a a building with a a you single remember. story, like. It's got a ruined uh, uh, roof, okay. and the door is still intact. So, okay, because I was going to say my vision is blocked. I'm going to check out this door. Do I hear anything on the other side of it? Make a perception check. <laughs> you hear just the wind. Anybody else hear anything on the other side of this door? My ears feel kind of gummy. Well, uh, can you move over to the side? I'm just squeezing <laughs> All right, I, I, there you go. Oh, oh okay. Uh, the, the... 23. You listen and you hear nothing, Tara. No, there's nothing in there. Can I open it? You certainly can try. I'm it's a little, it's a little stuck, but you can pull it and it opens uh, with a sort of <laughs> of rotted wood. Um, and Hello. as the wood pulls away, you see inside a sort of small room with huh. nothing inside. With nothing in it. Well, that was anticlimactic. No. That room doesn't have any further doors in it. I'm just going to step in and look around. The door that you just like pulled off just like falls to the ground and just pff, turns into wood <laughs> flinders. Nothing on the walls. Nothing of interest. Nope. Play hide and seek in here. <laughs> just stone <laughs> and rubble. Eh. Okay, well. Well, good news, it's not an outhouse. <laughs> or bad news, depending on what you need. Uh, Found another one. I'll listen at this door, too. Uh, Yeah, I mean, you don't hear anything with a 12. Can I try? Sure. I mean, yeah. sure. Step right up. Damn it. <laughs> nothing on you, Tyron. You hear nothing. You stick your elf in there, and you hear nothing, Elbalfin. It's probably the same result as the last one. I'm going to open this one, too. Okay. It pulls off, and it shows an empty room full of rubble. So much rubble. Oh, hey, it's, it's better than nothing. I think, yeah, so I'm going to poke my head in the door again. Nothing of interest at all, just rocks. It seems like the ceiling to this room, as well as perhaps the last room that you were in, or the small house, has just collapsed. Huh. I wonder how... You know, what, what do you think ever happened to the dwarves that lived here anyways? Like, what happened? I don't know, man. Like, it's all old and falling apart, and those guys in the tombs have been dead for a long time. Well, except for the one with the exploding neck, but otherwise. The exploding neck? That's what we're calling it now. Exploding neck. Well, then again, the only other person living down here is, well, the one in our voice, in our heads. Well, and, like, everyone in Skullport, so. Yeah. Oh, guys, this is the way to Skull... Uh, sure. Anything in there? You hear nothing. And to pull think this is... I'll go ahead think... and pull it open. Okay. Oh. You pull it open, and the door sort of disintegrates in your hand. <laughs> A room full of bricks and dust and rubble. This, pl this place sucks. When you say, this place sucks, the ru your, the, your voice sort of oh. carries... This place sucks. This place sucks. This place sucks. This place sucks. Uh, and uh, then you hear from the south, you hear. Something's awake. Mm -mm. Does this uh, sound like a thump, thump, thump we have heard before? Uh, I don't believe so. <laughs> what, what is What is that? I don't know. I don't. Do I still? 
Just get in the room. I am in the room. I was about to ask, we still have our stealth rolls. Like, I still have a 19 stealth right now, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, we still, we still have our stealth There is no door to this room. Because it has shit. fallen off. Yeah, that's fine. Get back in the corner and wait to find out what it is. This door is, I mean, well, I should say not this door, but this crazy sound has actually changed now. Instead of a single sort of growling, you hear like, like three sort of strange mewling growling sounds, all very different, um, all sort of emanating. And then the sound just going, and the floor starts to sort of shake and then it stops and you hear the glaive appears in your hand you hear Slows a little bit, but it's still getting closer. <laughs> Elbalthan, you can see from your position this monstrous thing. It's got a sort of furred back and huge bat wings coming out of the back of it. And it's searching around. And as you see, its head sort of looks um, westward, and it's got a head of a lion. So this is a weird sort of feral-looking lion. And as it does so, another head pops up. And instead of a lion head, it's got a strange sort of serpent-like head that swivels in one direction and then the other. And in the third head, that's right, three heads, it has some kind of weird goat-like visage with strange glowing eyes. And it just like pads through the corridor. And then it stops. And you all three heads just like turn in different directions and start sniffing the air. What do you guys want to do? I mean, keep hiding. The tactic is if it comes into the room, we surround it. I am going to reach into my bag and pull out just one of my pythons. Okay. And cast, and cast darkness on it. Your pitons, yeah? Yeah, one of my pitons. I'm now casting darkness on it. I'm going to put that out, but that's going to create a 15-foot radius sphere of darkness. A big old sphere of darkness, yeah. The... Okay. Within it. Cool. So then you guys are all shrouded, this immense sphere of darkness coming from this piton, right? Is that what your yes. intention was? Yes, okay. that is my intention. We are all going to be shrouded in magical darkness. There. Okay, beautiful. And that's actually a spell like ability. Cool, cool, cool. So you are now covered in this sphere of darkness. I can see in the darkness. Can you see in magic dark? Yeah. Oh, cool. It says a creature with dark vision can't see dark. Okay. Is devil sight different? Devil sight is different, yes. Okay, so he can see. Yeah, you can see. I think Devil Sight, you can see through magical darkness. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I can't see. I cast the spell, but I can't see through okay. it. Okay. But... So it's going to make a perception check at disadvantage because it sort of sees this darkness sphere. It's not trying to see you, but it's trying to sort of perceive what the fuck this thing is. So let's just have it make a wisdom check here. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, so it's sort of. All three heads just sort of like swivel in the direction of this darkness sphere, and it slowly pads in your direction. I'm going to chuck the darkness sphere, or chuck the python at it, so it is now in the darkness. Make a ranged attack. <laughs> I'm not trying to hit it. I just I want know. to land it near it. Oh, okay. I got gotcha. you. Okay, cool. I want to land it near it so that it is now like. Tell you what, make it make like, a dexterity check. Let's see how well you yeah. throw it's it. It's like in the hallway, right yeah. around there, so that it blocks its sight from and like it's now in the dark. Okay. okay. Works for me. 
Dun, 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 dun. Woo! Okay. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Um, and where did you want to have this uh, emanate from? Where exactly? Uh, I would like to have it emanate from trying to where, like, uh, if I can sail it right past it, I would love to have it emanating from right here, right behind it. Okay. Let me see if I can find a sphere of darkness. Uh, yeah, I got a spell effect. Uh, da, 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 darkness. Got a lot of darkness stuff. Spell creator. No. While he's doing that, I'm also going to message Telron and be like, how far away does your mage hand go? Uh, I remember. See? Okay, so how big is the radius of this darkness sphere? Uh, it's 15 feet. 15 feet? Yeah, 15 foot radius sphere. A radius, 15 foot radius sphere. Okay, so this is kind of, pretty sure that's 15 feet. There we go, that's 15 feet. One, two, three. My major, my major goes 30. Okay, so see this sort of like, this this uh, this cloud of sort of greenish blackness? That's mm -hmm. the darkness sphere. So you just place it right on top of this creature. And I'm going to put it, put it on the map layer so that you can see that. See what it, is. Right. it, you just hear from, as this thing goes flying out into the hallway, you hear all three heads just start like sh like shaking and 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 writhing i message talron and say if you can pick that up and move it down the hall maybe that thing will follow it what we're gonna do is we're going to take our break now and when we come <laughs> back when we come back, we'll see how Pharos and Crevular have done. <laughs> and, and then we'll come back and see how this shitstorm ends. <laughs> <laughs> but for now, we'll go on break. And uh, although we, defin we, we didn't have a, a technically a break before, but this is our first official sanctioned break. But yeah, um, here we go. Let's, uh, we'll come back in break, and we'll see you in... Uh, in five people. See you soon.
All right, we're back, we're back, we're back, we're back. Okay, so we're switching back to the team of four uh, now, I should say, uh, if you consider, uh, it used to be five, but it is no longer, now it is four, uh, because Zam has left them uh, to his own devices. <laughs> He's le- to, to the potential of being in a gang that will never accept him. Aw, poor Zam. Poor Zam. <laughs> He's he should be thankful he's alive. Okay. That's cool. Um so yeah, here we are. We're back here. Uh and let me shut the door. The door has been shut actually already. So, um let me bring us back to where you guys are and we can go from there. So, what do you guys want to do, Pharos and Crevular? I'm going to look at I'm looking at Halith and say, "Well, um do you have any like strong inclinations as to a direction, or should we just go randomly again? Halleth sort of looks in. He looks in. He looks at the door that's been just shut, and he looks across the hallway, and he says, "Well, I guess. I mean, try that door. There's also right. those other two doors up at the top there." And he sort of motions at the northern oh. ends of the hallway. All right. Oh, I'll look at this door. I'm not even going to check it. I'll just try to open. Okay. The door is um unlocked. You want to open it? Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, cool. Sure. Okay, you open the door, and inside this room, there is a quite an interesting sight. Um, uh, you sort of peer inside, and there are these very strange creatures sort of hopping around the room on all fours. They have, like, spines on their back. They have very arched, sort of taut skin over rippling muscle, and they have this sort of, like, wide-open jaws, and when one sort of, like, looks at you to see who has opened the door, you see that instead of two eyes, there is a single baleful green eye set in the middle of its forehead. And it's sort of like, you remember what these things are. You remember from the tomb. It's too bad I was dead. Oh, that's right. Sorry, other character. <laughs> oh, Laraxi remembers. It's like Pepper's Farm. Pepper's Farm remembers. Uh... <laughs> So, Ferris, you have no idea what the fuck these things are. <laughs> I've never seen these before at all. I've never even studied them. Um, you know what? Make an Arcana check in the three seconds before we start combat. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, uh, a 15. Yeah, I think that's good enough. Um, you have seen, again, pictures of these creatures in Candlekeep. Uh, they are called Nothix. Uh, they are... Um, in your remembrances, Nothics are creatures that um, were once human, uh, but used arcane rituals to further their uh, their arcane uh, magical ability, and it ended up transforming them into these awful, awful creatures. Um, let me show everyone else uh, the wonderful picture that we have of the Nothic, because Nothics are ridiculous and... Uh, Cool as hell. I love Nothics. This is what they look like. <laughs> Hi, I'm an Nothic. I'm gonna eat your face. Do, well, two things real quick. Well, I'm trying to think of remembering them right. Do I know if they can communicate, and do I know if they're going to attack? Um, with an Arcana of 15, you know that they can communicate. Yes. Um, do you know what if they would attack? You've never experienced one, so I Fair mean, enough. Uh, that is that is yet to be determined. Um, but let's check something out here. Ah, oh, those things. Information to do so. uh, he... I'll just look at them. I mean, if they're going to charge, they'll charge, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah, as you open the door, like, one of these creatures just, like, goes, and he just rushes at you. Let's roll initiative. My initials are on point. Creepy. I haven't rolled ones yet. That's creepy. Let's get some creepy music here. These things are nuts. That's not so creepy, but it's still pretty nuts. I like it. Okay, I don't know why, but it seems like ever since Neertheos and Crepular have met, their initiative rolls have always been either one after another. I've never had them be apart. They must be Aww. meant to be together. Yes. <laughs> exactly. All right, right, right Crevular. Yes. Why would I do that? 
You can do that ball by yourself. Crepular, you're up first. Also from <laughs> Halif. <laughs> oh, that's right, Halif. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it's still Crepular. Well, finally, he can use his, his sword again. Okay. So he's gonna do just that. Not with that strike, though, but maybe with that one. <laughs> Uh, let's see. An 8 misses, but a 17 hits. Alright, and then he's going to attack with his other longsword in his offhand. Ooh, yep. dang! Nice uh-huh. Hit. So the 17 hits, and so does the 16. So that is 22 damage. Okay. Cool beans. The first attack, you lance into the creature, you you hear the sizzle of electricity as it goes through it, and then you double up, and then hit the thing with your long sword, and it sort of shrieks in pain. Uh, all right, anything else? Nope, that's the end of Crabulous' turn. Okay, Nerthios' turn. Nerthios is just going to get, like, within view on this one way down here. I think that's within the range of his laser, pretty sure. Um... Well, what what was the range on his laser? Do we remember? Uh, I think it was... 90 feet. Yeah, it was pretty far, yeah. Okay, then he'll attack the one further. Which one? This um, one? Or one all the way over here? That was wow. only 30 feet away. Oh, wait. This, this one? Is there a third one? There's a fourth one. There yeah, are four of them in this room. That can oh, see. yeah, there is. Um, I didn't see the one all the way top. Uh... And he's going to paralyzing ray. Constitution saving throw. Uh, which one are you poking at? This one at the top? No, this one. Oh, uh, okay. Paralyzing. The furthest. Got it. From the door. Got it. Got it. Got it. Paralyzing ray. DC thirteen. Constitution saving throw. All right. That is a fourteen. Oh, so close. No soup for you. And that's the end of Nirthios. <laughs> Okay, now the creatures go. Um, so this one, let's see what its speed is. Its speed is 30 feet. Just like everybody else. Just like it, what it used to have in previous life. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Doesn't make it. And this one double moves. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 5, 10. That's enough for now. Um, this creature. <laughs> okay. So here's what happens. The first one who didn't make it to you, the guy who's just below you, Prevular, mm -hmm. um, his eye sort of opens enormously wide, and his eye sort of has this weird greenish glow. Make a constitution saving throw, please. Don't jinx yourself. Okay, you, myself. you feel like your skin starts to heat up for some reason, like with some weird energy coming from this creature, and then you're like able to shake it off. Um, the other creature... Oh my god, that's so cool. Um, the uh, This creature in front of you uh, just makes two claw attacks at you. Uh, both of them miss. Uh, so that's this one here. Even with advantage? Let me double check. Uh, sorry. Actually, the first one hits, and the second one misses. The uh, first one hits for seven slashing damage. Wait, wait, what's the attack roll? It's 21. Okay, yeah, that definitely hits. <laughs> yep, 21 hits you. So seven slashing damage. Uh, the okay. one behind you also claws at you. Or, uh, behind you twice. Uh, first one hits you with nine slashing damage. So it has advantage. And the second one crits you. Uh, also doing nine slashing damage. You like that number a lot, don't they? Nine! It's this one down here, right? So this one hit once. No, this is this one hit twice. Hit and crit. Oh, okay. Right? I, this one I, is the I, one I, that I, sort I, of opened its eye and sort of gave you that weird look. This one here, the fourth one... It does something very strange. Um, it like it covers its eye for a second, and then puts out its hands like this, and its eye is shut. But instead of its 
eye being in the middle of its forehead, its eye is replicated on its hands. And it sort of like presses them out at you, Creviler. I want you to go ahead and choose. Yeah, make a deception check. Check. Mm-hmm. I feel like something is going into your mind. 13, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. The creature, like, it, its eyes on its palms blink, and its mouth starts to speak, and it says... Lord Cravula von Helleboros. Father of Kyagra. And then it stops. And now it's Halith Gark's turn. Halith runs into the room. 10, 15, 20, 25. And smashes the one directly in front of him in the face with his greatsword now that it works. Uh, what's the damage on a grave sword? 2d6? I yeah. Think? 2d6 plus strength. Cool. Uh, 25. Hits with the great sword. In fact, he'll uh, do it again. So he hits with both of them and then rolls the damage. Eleven and twenty-two damage on the one right in front of him. Dope. We're happy with that. Just oh, swing, swing, and the creature goes as like lines cross in front of its uh, uh, body. Uh, and now it is Pharos's turn. Okay. Um. Yeah. I'll move forward. Is a spectator space. Um, I assume it's flying above, right? It is. It's a. It flies somewhere in the middle of the room, like above, about six feet okay, up. Cool. All right. Well, I'm below it then. Um, I'm going to say out loud, the best back off before we kill you. Okay. If they don't respond to that at all, then I will again, roll for a slide. Make an intimidation check. Okay. Uh... You say that, uh, the creature with the sort of the eyes on its hands, like, starts to, like, cackle malevolently, like, (laughs) Um, the one directly sort of in front of you, the one who is right here, he sort of looks at you, and he looks back, and he looks at you and just goes, (laughs) and the third one... The third one actually looks a little interesting. The third one looks like he's sort of like sh- his shoulders slump a little bit. He's like, why? He's sort of like this awful like cacophony of sounds that sounds like a humanoid maybe trying to say why coming out of its mouth. I'll back off and stop attacking us. Simple. We don't want to kill you. It looks at you. It looks at its at its compatriots and it doesn't. Here comes the slashes. All right. Uh, as a bonus action, we cast Searing Smite. Okay. All right, and then I'm going to alongside the one in front of me. Okay. Make sure you put the concentration marker on you, would you? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because I can't see you, because you're under Nerthius. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. 20 uh, hit. Absolutely, we'll hit. So that's 9 damage plus an additional d6. Okay. Ignite and flame, 15 damage. 9, Excellent. nine slash and five, 6 fire. We love it. Okay, and then the next thing, I'll go for another slash. Okay. 14 to hit. Oh, 24 to hit, it's advantage. Uh, 24 will absolutely hit. Okay. Go for the slash, and then, uh, well, you know, this fucker looked at me weirdly, so, you know, how about a divine smite? How about that? We like the smites. Make sure you right, take up that, slu- that spell slot. Yep, and the last question I should ask is, uh, is it undead? Uh, it is not undead. Do you get to determine talking. if it's undead? It says undead or fiends. It, there's a. There should be a thing at the top of the monster sheet. Fair enough. Oh no no no! I know. Sure, I know. I'm pretty sure it's an abomination. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, you get to slash it to determine if it does more damage. So I'll tell you how much damage to do if it's undead. Oh yeah yeah. It does more damage if it's undead. Right. Exactly. Okay. So yeah. Uh, are you using how many spell slots are you using for divine smite? Just the first. Yep. Yeah. So just roll one d eight. Oh no, two d eight. Deal two d eight extra radiant damage to target. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, 2d8. Yeah, that's right. And 1d8 3D8 for additional for spell lever. Super. So another 14. So, so 9 slashing damage, uh, 6 fire, another 12 slashing damage, and 14 radiant. Okay, it got fucked up by that divine smite. Like, you just see this brilliant golden, like, light that emanates from your final uh, uh, greatsword slash. Um, and it just, like, click, clutches at itself. It's like... Back off. Okay. Very good. Top of the round. Krebula, you're up. Alright. So this one, he didn't like what he said. So he's... Uh, not happy, we'll say. Okay. Um, and so, with his... Not happiness... The okay. one who um, said his name mm -hmm. is going to start wailing into that one. That's this one here, yeah. All right, and then he's going to do his first slash against it. The first one will miss. Just with that, all right, every first slash of each turn. <laughs> and another time. And he will miss again. He obviously has been uh, affected. Yes, he's like, ah! And this creature and just, like, hit. dodges out of the way, like, ah! And then his third hit. The third one will hit, yes, with a 17. So eight, so, and then as when it like when it reaches the skin, he's just like, "You don't know who I am." Um, out of the mouth of this creature, you just hear him say, "Yes, I do." <laughs> and your wife. <laughs> Anything else, uh, Krebular? That's the end of his turn. Northios' turn. Uh, he's going to. He's gonna take an opportunity attack. Okay. Back off a little bit. Was he in range? Uh, from this one here. Okay. I wasn't sure if he was flying high enough or not. Absolutely, yeah. Doesn't matter if you're oh. flying, as long as you're within five feet. Uh, all right. The creature rolled a sixteen on Nerthiost. No Nerthiost. His fourteen. Probably. That does hit. It's fourteen. Yeah. He takes he takes uh eight slashing damage from this creature. <laughs> Nerthiost like whines in pain. <laughs> a plus. <laughs> and then he's going to, uh, at this bottom one, he's going to try again with the paralyzing ring. Okay. Constitution saving throw. <coughs> uh, he got a five that time. All right. So he is paralyzed for one minute. You see his body make... start to turn slowly stiff. Can he make a save at the end of every turn? Of this? Yep. Okay. It's con save, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't I don't know if I can make this towards everyone. Let me see if I can make him... It's probably going to be too long. Cheap. It's probably going to be too long. Just It's paralyzation, one minute. You can end it on a con save at the end of your turn. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't think I can make it... Well, I'm trying to say is I'm trying to make it splay out to everybody, but I can't. It, it would probably be the entire list of rays. It's not worth it. Let's keep going. No. Anything else, cool. Northeast? Nope, that's the end of his turn. Okay, the Nothics. Uh, the one next to me gets, starts by burning Ezra roll con save, because I burned him from Searing Smite. Say that one more time. The one next to me is on fire. He needs to roll a con save because of Searing Smite. I, I had no that. idea that Searing Smite does that. That's cool. Yep. All right. Searing Smite eats blood. So a con save it is. Uh, he rolled an 8. That is below my DC, so he takes an additional 1d6 fire damage. Roll that fire damage. Six. <laughs> All right, oh. and with that, the fire just like he just immolates. He's like, Aah! is there any way I can make that subdural damage? Uh uh, sorry, dude, yeah, it's fire. I fucking weird. <laughs> yeah, you can't make fire uh, non-lethal. <laughs> Whatever, they fucking know the risk. <laughs> this thing just falls in a heap, and this awful stench comes out of it. Uh, so yeah, there you go. There's the fire. Um, I look at the others after the other one dies. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, so this one is going to attack Kravler, but it doesn't have advantage anymore. Uh, so yeah, it's going to... Yeah, actually, it's going to instead... Uh, Kravler, its eye also widens out and stares at you, and it sort of, like, shudders. Go ahead and make a constitution saving throw, please. Okay, you make it. Uh, yeah, because of your aura. 18. Beautiful. Okay, close this time, so you can exactly. it like that uh lucky that too okay so yeah you just feel like it's the same sort of awful heat just like piercing your skin but it doesn't do anything to you uh this one here the one who was who had his eyes on his hands like he just grabs his face and like his eye reappears and shing his claws come back out and he's gonna try to slash you twice again 
all the same time. Uh, yep. There we go. Uh, 16 to hit. That hits. And a 19 to hit. That hits. Okay, so that's 13 slashing damage to you. Total. Well, um, what, do I see which one, like, can I see which one does more damage to Crevula, possibly? I would say no. Okay. I mean... And I'm going to take, take the second one, and I'm going to rebuke the violent. Okay. So then you... The second one. The here. second one took six. So the first one, so you only take seven, and then... Uh, well, he has to roll wisdom save. Oh, rebuke the violent. Okay, cool. Channel divinity okay. to rebuke those who use violence. Da -da -da -da. Use your reaction to force the attack to make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, the attacker takes radiant damage. Love it. It still cool. take. He still takes the damage, regardless. Okay. But... That oh, damage so I still take dealt. the damage. Yeah, you okay. still take the full damage, but he also takes will take the six damage. Got it. Okay, okay wisdom save there. He got a fourteen. Uh, what's my DC? Oh, there you go. So he takes no damage. Fifteen. Oh, half 15. the damage. Fifteen. Fifteen radiant. No, if, my, my DC is fifteen, so he takes uh, six radiant damage. Okay, six. Cool. Good with that. <laughs> this sort of like beam of golden light flashes into this creature as it slashes into Crevular. And then this one is petrified, so it can't do anything. Oh. He has no actions, right? Because he's paralyzed. Sorry, yeah, not petrified. Yeah, can repeat the saving throw. That's exactly what he's going to do right now. And that is a, what, wisdom or constitution saving? Con. con Butte. He got a 17 this time. That that succeeds. He's All right, so he is no longer paralyzed. But he still lost his turn. He did lose his turn, which is a key thing here, because there are fewer and fewer of them. Halleth then takes out his... Uh, great sword as given to him by Pharos. Um and we'll slam into him. Uh, hits with a twenty and misses with a ten. But the first one, uh, uh, the first attack does two d six plus four damage. Thirteen slashes into this creature in front of him for thirteen and beheads it. Shing! It's dead. And as it does so, like, the head falls to the ground, and you just hear, in your mind, Crevular, you hear, <laughs> yeah, And then it dies. Halith, like, just looks at this greatsword in his hand. He looks at you, Ferris, and he's like, this is pretty good. Hey, what I tell you? Ferris. Yeah, quarter staff. <laughs> You're up, Ferris. All right, well, you know, I'll try it again, because there are two of their friends dead. I assume they're friends in some way. I look at them again. Back off, or we'll kill you. Simple as that. Uh, make an intimidation check. Nope. <laughs> you, it, it gets lost in the hubbub of the of the All screaming right, no. and the crying. No, that's fine. No, no, no. 20 to hit this one. Uh, yep, that will hit. Why did you get an advantage? Oh, because of the... Yep, mm -hmm. yep 20 to hit. Yep, absolutely. And long throw the second one, 22 to hit. Absolutely, both will hit. Roll your damage. Okay, so, so 15 slashing damage in total. Okay, very good, very good. It's still alive. I just, after I attack, that's, that's my turn. Okay, cool. Crevula, you're up. All right. He's going to try again. I'll still rage. Maybe he'll hit a bit better since he doesn't have that dude mind... Mind fucking him? I'm yep. Gonna, I, oh, okay. <laughs> we are allowed to use bad words. Yeah, oh, yes. Rage. We save them quite we a lot. Fuck. We can't fucking say bad words. Not yeah, we're, 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 we're not on YouTube. We don't have to worry about getting demonetized. Mm -hmm. Fuck YouTube. Bleep, bleep, um, bleep. Miss. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. It's not a miss 22. because you have flanking, oh, so that's 22. Flanking. So there you go. 14 damage. He's still up. 14. He is dead ski. How do you want to kill him? Right. So, Trevor is going to, like, pull his sword back. And then, like, the tip of it is pointed directly at the eye. And as soon as he starts thrusting, goes directly through. Ugh. As if there was no skull. Ferris, like, you're on the other it. side of it? Like, yeah, I was going to say, like, he's on the other side of it. And you just, like, you just see, like, coming out of the back of this thing's head, just like a blade. One <laughs> further than my head. And then he, like, pulls it back and, like, puts it to his, like, to the side. And he sidesteps to hit the other one. Okay. Um... But he's gonna, I think he's gonna move around it a bit more, actually. And, Cross, oh, shut up. Um, <laughs> you just did it when I told you. Yeah, I was doing that anyway. Let's keep going. And then he's gonna attack again. He hits with a 26. Alright, and that one does 16 damage. How's this one doing? He's, uh, he's, this is the first time he's been hit, so. Alright, well then he's gonna hit him again. Okay, with a longsword. Yep, with the regular. 14 will not hit. 
Alright. And that's the end of the Swish. Alright, Nerthiost. Alright, he's gonna do a different type of ray this time. Ooh, I think this is the first time I ever had him use this one. He's going to use a wounding ray. Ooh. Wounding ray. Constitution saving throw. He got a seven. Alright, so let me roll that damage. Sixteen! Very good. A blast from Nerthios arcs across the room and hits this thing in the side. <laughs> he is wounded. Congratulations. I'd assume so. Yes. Anything else from Nerthios? He wants to stay there and just blast away. He's having a blast. Oh, of course he is. Noth yeah! <laughs> the, the Nothic. The Nothic. Uh, wow. The one remaining Nothic turns towards you, Crevular. And again, his eye glows green and his mouth slavers. Make a constitution saving. This was a plus three. Oh, snap! Your constitution is crazy, bro. Uh, He's too far yeah, away from the plus three. might be a barbarian or something. I know, I know. <laughs> Weird, I know. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. <laughs> hey, we got raided again by Goblin Cave. Goblin Cave. Thanks again. You guys are awesome. Um, we are happy with them being here in channel to watch you guys destroy some Nothics. Um, okay, so yes, absolutely. Uh, he completely, like his eye just glows and then it just sort of fizzles. And you get the feeling that this creature is somewhat distraught at the fact that none of them could do what they really wanted to do to you. Or that the DM is a little distraught that the uh, <laughs> Nothics are unable to. Anyway, let's keep oh, going. Weird, should have attacked the guy with a plus seven against uh, I know, him. they're Nothics, they used to be smart. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Halith Gark will now go ahead with his awesome, uh, uh, greatsword. Again, handily given to him by Pharos. What's the damage? Uh, oh, snap, he critted on that one. Boom! Uh, so that's 2d, so I gotta roll another 2d6. So that's 4d6. Let's just roll another 2d6. So that is 21 damage. Oh, yeah. Halith, again, kill steals and chops this thing into bitty bits bits. I don't think he's getting any kill steals. I think he got his rightful damage. He's like, he takes the greatsword and the first, he just goes, and the thing just like splits quarterwise and just like slides off and falls on the, floor, on the ground. And there are no more Nothics. So I will therefore end a combat. So since they're humanoid and might have possibly been previously human, would they might possibly have some roots on them? Uh, you can certainly search their bodies. Or, I mean, they have no clothes on them. They are simply just skin and spikes and awful muscle. Okay. They ain't gonna have anything very good over there. That was the wrong voice. They ain't gonna I have anything very good over there. Wrong voice. I didn't uh, say feel my pain. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't say anything, but... Okay. I know you were looking at it, though. I could tell. I was looking at the dead corpse, yes. I had to tell the I wanted to see enough. it die to make sure that it is dead. I haven't felt that Not moving. Yeah, thanks. I know. I haven't felt Oh, so you do get it. All right, good. So don't ask stupid questions, dum-dum. I like how you're calling me the dumb one. It's kind of funny. <sighs> I guess that just proves how dumb you are, doesn't it? You're dumber than I am. Halith, I Halith this, like, moves past this conversation, just yeah. stepping on one of these Nothics and just like moving on. He's like, this is ridiculous. Can we just... Is there anything else in this room, Grab? You can look around, you know, you probably want to find it. <laughs> I'm not the intelligent one. You go find it. Nah, There's just... Nothic to see here. I That was so funny, I remembered to laugh. <sighs> oh, God. I decided not to. Okay. Go wait in the car. I will go wait in the car. Goodbye, everybody. No. Get out of here. There are... So this room has low-lying stone shelves, which line the walls. Um, and uh, you see above these stone shelves, there are helmets and sort of dusty... What look like uh, goggles with leather straps hanging on pegs. Above the above the uh, the shelf. I gotta say, Crevular, I get your job of killing things off randomly. I, it's kind of exhilarating. I haven't had had that feeling in quite a while. The rust monsters didn't pose much, but the Nothics were kind of fun. Don't don't assume you know how it works, because you'll fall for the truth. I don't just kill to kill. 
I'm oh, not I some wild beast. I'm not saying you, you may are. have used to be. Let's keep going. Halleth well, looks I back at you. Well, I see if these goggles were magical at all. Uh, you can look at them. I mean, you don't have a detect magic spell. Yeah, I know I don't. Trying to hint at it. <clears throat> mm. what the hell I wish someone here could detect magic. I wonder how many spell slots I have. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if detect magic is a ritual. Mm. I wonder who can ritual cast. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if my class can. The meta is strong in this episode. <laughs> I'm sorry, Crabular. I don't know what you're getting so frustrated about just standing I there doing nothing. Anything. I know you didn't, but you seem to get frustrated about nothing. <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm not... Oh, okay. Fair enough. Do you not understand how emotions work? Ah, <laughs> uh, you know, clearly I don't. Halleth looks back at you and says, I remember. And then it just turns around and keeps walking. Thanks. And uh, oh, Crevler's gonna... Can he at least make an Arcana check to see if it is magic? So Arcana doesn't tell you if something is magical, but it can tell you the nature of certain kinds of magic, if it's present, or if it has the sort of resemblance of something magical. But it wouldn't tell you if it is magical. But you could look at the goggles and make an Arcana check and... See what it tells you. I guess I'll do that. Go for it. No one else. No one else wants. No one else, to, being no one one else wants to do it with the magic. Can't I don't have spell slots, on. <laughs> Get some. Okay. <laughs> Brothers Grim here, folks. Brothers Grim, could you just do your Arcana check? I'm looking. It's but the I'm one that to... says A R C A. Okay, one. let's see. A R C A N. No, 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 not that there one. We go. No, that's there you go. <laughs> no, that's all four. Those are the ones that started with A. Good job. He found four. <laughs> found four words. The best part is he passed over Arcana. I got to athletics because athletics is the fourth one. Arcana is the third one. I'm gonna make a, a small break here because I got a, a small creature here. Who assistance so i'll be right back while you guys determine what it is that um you know you might want to do with i found some things right back. <laughs> there are things yeah i gotta back up with that meta holy shit it was a little no bit it's not meta no no but i was doing a lot i need we were talking out of character yeah i was talking out of character yeah, i don't want to do too much no it's not meta what what what's up there i don't know he wants to show his stupid figurine that he got painted wow oh, oh, play nice oh, hey Going. Everybody instantly gets def that's a, offended. That's a cool Yuki Yuanti, come on. I mean, I wouldn't really say it's Yuanti. I mean, I got it from a friend. Apparently it's kind of, well, yeah, it's, a, it's some kind of species from Warhammer 40k. Oh, okay. That, I don't know anything. <laughs> Never mind. I, I don't know nothing either. I just... I saying, it looks like a Yuanti abomination from this distance. But it's cool looking. Yeah, it got like painted and everything. Nice. I, I, I wish the camera could like on it, like... Put it right in front of your face. There you go. Like that, drag it slowly backwards. It's it's not. He's kind of like the camera's autofocusing. Ah. Damn it! Oh, and I even got like a book. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. Again, I don't know nothing about 40k. I just so happen to receive this. I know absolutely nothing about Warhammer 40k either. Earlier, when you had it in front of your face, you were like the nerdy version of Ruben. <laughs> just like Warhammer and Ryan. <laughs> if my camera picks up on. I mean, the only thing I know about Warhammer in general is no matter what version you look at, either the fantasy version or sci fi version, they're both fucked. <laughs> like in a I mean, good way? If my fan picks up on the mic, please let me know. Well, in, the, in a sense that their worlds are, like, extremely violent. Okay. Like, there's always constant war. It's gory as hell. It sounds like so, fun. Like I said, no matter what version you're looking at, either the fantasy one or 40k. Nice. 40k is a sci-fi one. I know literally nothing about Yeah, in the year 40,000. 
Nice. Yeah. Yeah, when you got fucking orcs in space that apparently use junk for their ships and whatnot. Uh, okay, I want to play this game. This can I be a it's... space orc? Be a space orc. I mean, they're definitely an interesting. Uh... Well. <laughs> <laughs> It's a shit ton of miniature collection, I'll tell you that. <laughs> like my cats would have had to stay with that. Like it's basically a game of like having like hundreds or so miniatures like on the field versus like an army. Oh, okay. So it's like one army versus another army. Space Marines and so, all that. So there we go. Apologies. Let's continue. We were just talking about space marines. I'm sure you were, which were totally part of this world. Um <laughs> pew pew. Let's keep going here. Uh, Pharos uh, and Crevular, what do you guys want to do? Well, I guess we're going to look further down the Moving hall. forward with Hala. Okay, Hala sort of like looks up northward, Ooh. like around here. And he's just sort of like points in that direction. He goes, <sighs> Toilets. And then just keeps walking. I have no idea what word he just said. Toilets. Oh. Okay. I thought he said trellis. I was like, what the fuck? And then he stops. Because before you, Pharos, there is an enormous eight foot high wall made out of skeletons and armor. There's about a two-foot gap between the top of the wall and the ceiling. Well, this is interesting. Hmm. Do I see any obvious, like, possible crevices? Or is it just, is this made out of skeletons and armor? Is it nothing it's more made to... entirely out of skeletons and armor. How fragile does this wall look? I mean, How you can try to, to you could try to push it down. Wanted to. It's made out of skeletons I'm and armor. About it falling on my head. I, I don't, don't blame you. Because I feel like that would, you know, especially like a sharp pointy end of a helmet. Um, I think, I think the more worrying thing about it, if we try to. I'm just looking at the wall. Um, I could push it down, but the problem is we might alert anything else that might be hostile in the area. And <laughs> at, least, at least. I mean, yeah, sure, you're ready for it. I don't have any spell slots left, though. You need spells to fight? That's true. I guess I don't. Fuck it. I'm pushing down the wall. Okay. You push down the wall. Make a strength check. Athletics. Can I help him? You sure can. But it seems like he doesn't even need it. <laughs> <laughs> he just like rushes the wall and just shoulders it. And just... There's enormous clatter of bones and metal. And it makes this enormous sound. Which just like echoes resounding through the entire space. And the whole thing falls to pieces. I hope this wasn't someone's, like, hobby or something. It's po possibly was. Or you possibly those, someone's way those, of warning that someone's coming. It could be someone. like those uh, barkeepers that, like, they stack the cards in a weird way? It's like that, sure. but with skeletons, apparently. I mean, oh. it's also entirely possible someone just set it up so they would hear anyone approaching who couldn't go through the wall without like a misty step or something okay so with the wall down you see that there are exits to the north and to the east oh it's just a fucking wall i don't fucking know which way does haleth garth wish to go i think he's just following us haleth doesn't really know which way his quarry lies he just knows that at least they're here on this but he feels like we're. He feels like you guys are doing the right thing. Maybe going in the right direction. Let's go up this way. Then. Yeah, fuck. I'm not looking for traps. I was thinking about it, but nah. <laughs> only, only cool That's... kids look for traps. Al Balthan already looked for traps everywhere on this. Oh, uh, I should probably stop here, actually. When you get to this sort of subsection. corridor here, you see a downed minecart in front of you. 
Um, yeah. There's a sort of strange sound coming from the other end of one of these mine carts. It sounds like. Jeez, I think I have the sound effect for it. It's very, very cool. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, yeah, here it is. It's this, it's sort of, from your distance, it sort of sounds like a strange amalgam of like talking and chittering and like jabbering and gibbering. I can see what this is right here. What is it? It's this sort of weird it's like I don't know what the best way of describing it. It's like this sort of amorphous blob of tentacles. And it has eyes, like strange eyes, all over it, from top to bottom. And where there are no eyes, there are these maws of sharp fangs and tongues. And every single mouth on this creature is uttering awful, inhuman sounds. and Some actually kind of human sounds. And moaning and screeching. divine sense to see if it's like a celestial uh, fiend or undead I was Cel thinking to take Hela, but... celestial fiend or undead none of those okay. you hear voices that come from people as well as these awful moans and groans you hear the voice of a, of a, a what seems like maybe a woman screeching leave me alone leave me alone and then the voice of insane uh, 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 just writhing in pain all coming from this one creature ahead of you. Does it approach us? Or does it just it's just there? standing there. Its eyes view in all different directions. As you move around the minecart, it moves in your direction. And as you move back, it charges. And that's where we're going to stop with you guys. And go back to our friends back on level three. So, uh, Dracon, uh, sorry, not Dracon, uh, Zeke, I keep talking about the, you know why? Because you have your names in damn Roll20 when you should have your character names. Whatever. Talron, Zeke, and Elbalthin. Where are you guys? Let's see. We are... Yeah, you guys are... Oh, you. that's right. Yep. You guys are facing off against this thing. So you know what you're going to do? I think you know what you're going to do. I don't know what you're talking about. But didn't uh, I tell Talron to try to use the mage hand to move the thing away to see if we could get the thing to leave us first? Yes, you did. That still doesn't mean that you're not going to go into initiative. So let's, let's, just, uh, let's just make sure it doesn't get through the door and try not to wrap yourself in darkness. So, roll initiative. Surround it. And well, the darkness will be gone soon. Let's see what happens here, folks. Darkness and lightness and blackness and whiteness. Darkness, my old friend. Damn, we are, we are on fire. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> oh, you guys, you guys have the distinct advantage of not having a fuck ton of NPCs with you, so I'm happy about that in and of itself. Uh, and Talron, oh, sorry, Zeke is first. Okay, it is already in darkness. It is. I am. Ugh. Well, you spoiled my plans of trying to get out of here without having covered it at all. You're kind of trapped. And, well, I was hoping I'd get it to move down the hallway with my darkness and we could sneak out behind it. What do you want to do, You decided Zeke? we had to fight. Um, I decided? Well, you cut You cut before this, we could try it. I did. I you did. You did, so you decided. Okay. Um, all right. I am going to actually... Uh, prepare and hold a fireball, but I'm gonna wait to see. If we... okay. I am gonna wait to see if we can make it go away first. Fair enough. 
Fair enough. So I'm going to hold. If it tries to enter the room, I am going to take my action. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Uh, if that's the end of your turn, Tower on your up. You have your glaive in your hand. Well, it's in darkness. North or, north or south, Zeke? What's up? North or south? Uh, do we want to go back the way we came, or do we want to go further in? I want to talk about the darkness. I know. I'm asking which south, way we want to go. South. We want to go south. We want to go south and send it north. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm going to use a mage hand. Okay. To grab the the darkness bead thing. Python. Spike. Python. Yes, 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 yes. yes. And try to start having it move uh yeah move north how far north well how far north uh, gotta tell me you want it to move off because your mage hand comes out and it moves 30 feet right so it's 5 10 15 to just to get to the actual python python whatever so then you have another 15 feet so you can go 15 feet north or 15 feet south 15 15 feet north 5 10 15 okay as it moves off this creature the creature sort of like is no longer surrounded by it and it suddenly comes out of this sphere of darkness and (laughs) all three of its heads uh fasten on you inside the room tower they can see wow. us? Mother. Well, the darkness isn't around it anymore. Right, we were stealthed. Uh, yeah. Um, it can it can pretty much, I mean, let's see. How good was your stealth? Let's take a look. I was a 19. 19? 19 and Talrons was a 13. Okay, let me, uh, let me roll a perception check for it. How about that? I'll make it fair. All right. I got a 18 perception. Excuse me. So it sees Talron. It might not see Elbalthin and Zeke, but it sees Talron. Well, seeing as that was a terrible idea, I'm going to use a bonus action to uh, Hexblade's Curse it. Okay. It is Hexblade's Cursed. <laughs> this black energy comes out, and it surrounds the creature. Anything else, Talron? Yeah, I already used my action. Bonus action. I'm All already right. getting ready to get... Okay. <sighs> One of hurt. the creature's heads... The dragon head, which you see loud clearer, it looks like a red dragon head. Um, it sort of goes, and the inside of its mouth lights up orange, and then it goes, and it exhales fire in your direction. Uh, let's do that. Yeah, let's do fire. So it just goes, actually, that's the wrong one. It's not burst. It is breath. There we go. So it just goes like that. So go ahead and make a dexterity saving throw. Who, everybody? Nope, Tauron. 15 foot cone. I'm going to spend two sorcery points. Wait, is it worth it? Hold on. Uh, Shit, I don't think I can get it high enough. Never mind. Dexterity save of 11 is not enough uh, for this breath. Uh, DC was 15. So you take 31 fire damage. So Tauron just takes the full blast of this thing. Don't you, don't you have a fireball ready, Sarah? Because if you do... Her action, I think, that she said was the fireball when it enters the room. If it tries to enter the room, I did not make a good choice of what it was held for. I'm worried... Does, it, does its attack entering the room? Its attack does, does it enter the room, but it did not. I, does that count as... It's up to you. If you want to cast then, it... Well, I mean, I lose it otherwise if I don't use it on the True. combat. So, True. yes, I would like to cast it. Excellent. It is a 20-foot radius sphere. I am oh, going no. to center it in the hallway. Okay. So that it can't get... Can you ping where you center your fireball, please? I'm going to center my fireball back here. Because that should... It can go around corners, but it still shouldn't hit Tauron. True, true, true. Can you just ping where you want to put it? Right here. Am I missing it? Maybe I'm not seeing it. I'm pinging. I'm two blocks below, like uh, where the where the hallway bends. Two so like there, can there. you see my ping? Yes, that is okay. where I was pinging. That's okay. Okay, yeah, cool. So right. there we go. So let's go ahead and make a little uh, firebomb. 
boom, and... Ah, that was not a shit. That was not the right firebomb. It was more like this. Fire I think it's like that. Boom! There we go. Kaboom! It totally DC catches 16. it. DC 16 dexterity. Okay. It got a four. Boom! 23 fire damage. Excellent. Ouch! Kaboom! Okay, did not like that. That's for sure. Um, go ahead and roll a 1d100 for me, Zeke. Okay. 15. Okay. Here we go. Oh, step, you lucky duck. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> As you cast this fireball, and it the arcs out from your hand, your hand starts to feel, like, tingly. And you're like, oh, this is awesome. I feel energized. <laughs> yeah, let's do this thing. You have the effect <laughs> of you regain five hit points every round for a minute. What? Ooh. Yes. Wild magic, man. Love so, it. Good. There you go. There's your five hit points. Nice. Okay. Uh, so that is uh, the Chimera's turn, and now it's Elbalfin's turn. Okay, so here I go. I have sneak enabled. Okay. You are sneaky sneaked. Gonna, sure. Sneaky sneaked. I'm going to come within range. Yep. And I am going to rapier that shit. Do it. Yeah. See it. Anxiously awaiting the rolls. Yes, a 27 will hit. Doing 28 damage. Yeah, that's then what I will do is I will disengage and okay. I will back away. Okay. To right here. Where's okay. Talrod? Yeah, he's on fire right next to you. No, I'm not on fire, but he's smoking. <laughs> I'm gonna back up right here. Okay. One of its heads, like, fastens the goat head, like, fastens its eyes on you. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. Anything else? You stay where you are? Um, that's it. Cool. Next round. Zeke, you're up. All right. So take your yeah. 5 HP back. If I you haven't did. already. Excellent. Well, that was on that round. So actually, this is the next round. So now I get another 5 back. Yes. Excellent. There you go. So you're Sweet. back up to full, yeah. or almost, very close to it. One away. Beautiful. One away. All right, so we've hit it with some damage. I am going to hit it with a color spray. Ah, yes. At level two. Okay. Because I'm going to get some extra hit points, because I don't know how many it has, but probably a lot. Color spray. So I need to roll 8d10. Mm-hmm. You have got to be shitting me. That's a that's, that's a lot of that's not that great. I'm assuming it has more than 26 hit points left. As long as it has okay, then nothing happened. If it okay. Had, so this if beautiful it had rainbow points, spray like it comes out of your hand and it just like goes and just floats over this creature and just like dissipates. The yeah, creature I have just no like idea how flaps its wings. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that was a total waste of that turn now. Okay. Uh, roll a 1d20. La. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. Uh, now, well, I think I, I think Wild Magic is on a 1, not a 20. Oh, it's on a, I thought it was on a 20. It's, it's on a 1. It's on, it's a, on one. a 1. Oh, yeah. never mind then. Okay. <laughs> if I was mean, I'd be like, so roll a 1d100. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're fine. Okay, yeah. It would be cool if they had something for Wild Magic, like, roll it twice if you get a d20. Uh, 20 yeah. to d20 or something like that. Okay, anything else, Zeke? Or it's like we are? you get to choose your surge. Yes, exactly. That would be awesome. Anything uh, else? Homebrew. Uh, no, I'm pretty much just, I'm going to, like, back a step further into the fucking corner. Okay. Um, is dark, is Darkness is not concentration, correct? Uh, no, dark. No, that it's one minute. Concentration up to a minute. I mean, I have There's to take it. Let okay, me just double yeah, check. Okay. Yeah, it's concentration. Okay, cool. Okay. Just making sure. 
So then my my darkness. So I'm gonna put a little going. concentration marker on. Yes. So my darkness is still going. Yes, it is still going. All right, Talron, you're up. Actually, in which case, I lied. I'm gonna duck into this little corner of my dark. Is that in the room? So the darkness is not in the room because it's okay. it's okay. like it's, it's along the, the okay. exactly. Yeah. Sorry, it's just on Where the map. Worth a shot. <laughs> All right, Talron's up. It's like you can Ow. either hurt it or you can put it back in darkness. You know what, I'm good. I'm gonna use an action to move the darkness back on top of it. Okay. The mage hand comes out and moves the darkness back on top of this creature. Yeah. Doot, doot, doot. That was a waste of time. Yep. Sorry. And I'm using a bonus action to hex it as well. Okay. So now it has. Does that take over Hexblade's curse, or is it just both? It stacks. Oh, it stacks. So I'll just well, keep I mean, the hex on. Hexblade's curse is more like it's its own separate thing. Okay, cool. I'll just keep the purple on it then for hex. And it has a disadvantage on wisdom checks. Cool wisdom, love it. Anything else? Move. Gonna move. Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna. Okay. Just gonna, cool. oof. Yeah, I'm good. Super. All right. It is now the Chimera's turn. The Chimera does not like being in darkness, and so it moves into the room. Shit. Oh, fucking hell. And uh, now it. In darkness. Uh, I would say it's half in darkness. So I'll give you. I'll give you advantage on this uh, because it's just spraying wildly with its. Well, actually, let me just double check something and see if it actually gets its uh, its flame breathy breath back. One D six. Oops! Try to slash in front of it, dude. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so it it you just hear it go. <laughs> so it doesn't get its flame breath back, but instead it comes out and it slashes it Albalfin three times. One for each claw. Okay. At disadvantage at all or no? Um I'll give you I'll give you I'll give you half cover. So that gives you a plus two to your AC. Okay. Cool. So let's see. It makes three attacks. One with its bite, one with its horns, one with its claws. So bite, horns, claws. All of these are with a minus two to negate. So for your plus AC. Uh the first one's a twenty one. So that's a nineteen on the bite. I think your AC is an 18. Right. Uh, second one is uh, is a 17 minus 2, which is a 15, so that misses you. So the goat horns just ram through the air and get nothing. And then the second one, the claws of the dragon, wish through the air and uh, got a 15, and they missed you. But the bite does, in fact, hit you, so it takes 15 piercing damage. I am Kenny Dodger. Excellent. You take 7. All right, and that is his turn. And he stands there in the room. Elbalthin, you're up. Okay, I'm going to use a bonus action for the eye. Insightful fighting? Yeah, insightful fighting. Let me Excellent. Just post it Absolutely. Insightful fighting. I have to do a deception against your insight. Yeah, it's a disadvantage. Uh, it's, no, it's wisdom. Wisdom checks, he said. Not charisma. Oh, oh. oh right, yeah. Fine. Oh, yeah, that 27 insight's going to beat pretty much anything. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> nice job. All right, so you get uh, you get the sneak attack. Till the end of time. You see all the weak spots. You see the hole in Smaug's armor. Going to rapier the fuck out of it again. D rape rapier away. If it hits. With a twenty-eight, it will hit. It will kill. Thirty-two points I of damage. I love that show. I love that show too. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Thirty-two. Excellent. Shing, you go right into the creatures goes. <laughs> He 
You still have uh, a movement if you want to use it. I'm going to stay right here. Uh, I expect one of you to come here and flank me. <laughs> flank me later! Up. It is Zeke's turn. Well, I was going to come and shove it out of the way, but I can also just come over here and fuck Not, it up. No, no, no. Keep your concentration. Keep your concentration, dummy. Oh, I've got advantage on concentration checks. I'm good. Uh, oh, okay. okay. But what I will do is I'm going to come stand next to Elbaltham. And I'm gonna hit that fucker with a cone of cold. Oh, okay. This is dexterity. Um, I don't. Remember. It is Constitution save. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Oh boy. Oh boy. There you go. DC 16. Constant. He hits it on the nose. 16. So I take half damage on that. One. All right. It's 20. 20. Still 20. Oof. Ouch! That did not make the Chimera very happy at all to get blasted by that. And I stayed. I have to stay there so you can maintain flanking, yeah? Well, it's also for Tauron so that he can have advantage. I mean, you can back away if you want. But then he gets an opportunity to attack on you, right? Is that how that works? If, uh, uh, if he hasn't used his reaction already, then he would get an opportunity to attack, yeah. And this is the top of the round, so he definitely hasn't. So I'm going to... So we're giving, in this position, I think we're giving um, Talron advantage. If he decides to use it. I just want advantage on my next attack. <laughs> okay. I got you. I understand. Zeke, anything else? Uh, we determined that Quicken... <clears throat> can I, ca I can't cast a cantrip as a Quicken spell on this, right? Uh, so you cast a spell you can cast as a bonus action if it's a cantrip. Do you have a, uh, then, a bonus action cantrip? Well, yeah. Then. Quicken spell as cantrip. Yeah. All right, then I'm gonna try and shocking grasp him. Is that a bonus action? Uh, if I cast as a quicken spell, it is. Ah, excellent. So I'm gonna shocking grasp. As How many more sorcery action. points you got? I have plenty. I barely used any. Of this I round. love it. I love it. So you quicken your spell, uh, and you're like, zzzz, when you fucking shocking grasp. I love it. Yes. And that's an 18, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, 18 will hit. Absolutely, yeah. All right, so he takes 12 lightning damage and cannot take reactions until his next round. Excellent. Until his next turn. Excellent. Then... Well, you can move away. <laughs> so now I'm going to back the fuck up again. Zap move. Fucking zap move. Classic. The zap and move. Classic zap combo. Move. Excellent. Talron, you're up. All right. I'm going to swing at it. Right. Your glaive have reach? Ten feet. Dope. Swing away. No advantage, right? Or... Nope. But I might be able to help you out if you fail. A 12 will not hit. It oh, glances yeah, off this creature. I'm flanking, right? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm flanking. flanking. I'll both then is flanking. You're not on the right no. side of Sorry. flanking. That's, um, you'd have to be on the other side. Yeah, you'd have to be, like, over here. Got it. For next time. So, yeah, it glances off the creature's hide, like, armor. But the 25 will definitely hit, doing 12 slashing damage. Actually, 16. Oh, uh, with a, right, with the uh, hex. Oh, wait, weren't also, we giving him partial actually, cover? Weren't we giving him his that advantage because that guy's half in the dark? Weren't we doing that? Or was that only for that last round? That was only for the last round. Okay, just checking. But, so, go ahead, yep. With the additional five necrotic damage, and then as a bonus action, do it. <laughs> <laughs> Maddening hex, <laughs> the best. God, you just have all these like so, additional damage types. I love it. So 21, 24 total damage. Okay, we like that. Good job. Almost as much as above. If the first swing hit. You guys have beaten the shit out of this thing. L allow me to retort. Oh no. Let me uh, see if he brings back his... Okay. No. He does not recharge his breath weapon. Again, lucky. Uh, but he will slash at Elbalthin three times. 
or I should I'd say attack about three times since he's right in front of him. He's still covered in darkness, though. So, so that gives you a minus two. It gives you a minus two. Uh, sorry, a plus two on your AC, minus two on his attack. Well, let's just say 20. So you have Perfect. to go over 20. Okay. Uh, no, yes, yes. So the bite, which hits you the first time, does not. So he snaps at you with his bite, and you dodge out of the way. But unfortunately, it lands you right in front of the goat head. It goes, poof, and he hits you right in the gut. And then it sort of flips you through the air, and the dragon just goes, and he shreds you with his claws. So the, the horns hits you for 10 bludgeoning, and the claws hit you for 10 slashing. And that is his turn. Elbalfin. Okay, so with that said, I'm going to rapier him again. Okay. But this time, I am going to rapier, rape him here from this side. Ah, you have ah. done, you have nice. done, you have done, you have done me proud. You have flanked. You have flanked. <laughs> you have successfully flanked yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Jimmy, you flanked yourself. With a 22, that will hit. Shing! How much damage is that? 25? Yeah? Yeah. And if you want to get away from him, he still is reactionless until the end of this round. He's looking pretty shitty. Gotta be honest. We hit him a lot of times. He's bleeding from every orifice. Oh, away what are you from doing? Okay, I'll stay. I'll stay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 it's a, uh, uh, okay. Anything for your bonus action? Can you tell me? Let me see what my cunning act. I forget what my cunning act. Hide. Is. Dash. Hide, hide. Dash. And um, what's the third one? Uh, disengage. Can I try and hide? No, you can, right. You can certainly try. Okay, let's got some darkness. It's gonna be a tough DC. He has a high stealth. High stealth. Yeah, sure. Where'd he go, George? Where did he go? Not Ooh. enough. DC's ah. 25. He's right next to the damn creature. Sorry, DC was 25. He had a okay. chance. And he rolled. What did you roll? Because that's really shitty for your, most of your stealth rolls. You roll a 7. Yeah, no wonder. Yeah. You try to hide, you're like, you don't see me. And the creature just like looks right down on you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Zeke, you're up. Okay. Almost got it. I know. I. He's looking pretty shitty again. So, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to come down here real quick and try to blind him a second time. Okay. Color spray? Yeah. I'm going to color spray him again. So. I'm just going to do it as a first level this time because he's looking. Yeah. Crappy, so that's that's uh, 68. 60 60 60 10. 60 10. 60 10, not 60 Whoa, 10. Whoa, it just cut and pasted a whole bunch of random shit in here. Ah. <laughs> Whoa. Roll 60 10. 31. 31. Okay. So, yeah, he definitely has less than 31 hit points. Boom. So, so he, he is, is now blind. Super blinded. Super, super blinded. blinded. And I'm going to duck on back out of the way. Okay, uh, roll a 1d20, please. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, yeah, you're fine. You feel like the power's like, uh, remember, uh, oh, you haven't, you, you haven't gotten back your, um, your, de- your uh, five hit points. You're back up to full. Oh, yeah. Sweet. You're back up to full. For Can she transfer that to other people? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. I told you if I could. Take a, take a level in Wild Magic Sorcerer and we'll talk. Uh, <laughs> all right. Tauron, you're up. Well. This creature's just like well. writhing. All three of its heads are like. Well, I'm just going to spin this glaive around for a bit. <laughs> and then freaking swipe out. I will hit. Why one? Really? Oh, right. How much is that? So, Nine slashing? Uh, 13. 13 slashing. Plus, yeah, plus, uh, plus the three necrotic damage. Okay. 
So which of these awful ways of offing this creature, how would you like to kill it? Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Maybe that... that does it. Swing. Anyone well, explain? Like... Narrate. Give us a story. Well, definitely I would like to think that at first I would like to seeing as it looks like it's flailing around like trying to swipe at whoever is trying to come close to it. Luckily I got range. So first I'm going to make a a cut off try to cut off the neck of the goat. Ching! The goat head falls to the ground and topples. The other two heads are swinging through the air. Next I would like to swipe down cleaving the Reptilian head. The dragon head. Shink. Like. In two. The other two halves of it just sort of like slowly subside. There's still a lion head. It's like roaring. Its eyes are white. Well, as it's making its roar, I'm going to go like spike my way up from inside its mouth and through its head. It's gout of blackish red blood comes out and the whole thing falls down to the ground. <sighs> <sighs> well, that was. <works. sighs> DM. Over it, I'll... <sighs> <sighs> I'll drop concentration <sighs> on the darkness now. Darkness Excellent. is gone. Goodbye, I look darkness. over at Elbouth and I'm like, "You okay, man?" Yeah, I'm. I'm good. I mean, I could I'm, use a rest, like a, I'm defi- a long rest. I I look down at my chest for a bit, having like that, having actually having a scorch mark on me, like. Fuck. This is some brand new armor. Uh, I can't... I don't, that's not a tear. I can't fix that with my things. So... I mean, I think. Here's what I'd like all of you to do at this point. As you are talking, Talron, Zeke, and Elbaoth, and as this creature up one level is charging at Pharos, I would like all five of you to make a wisdom saving. Wait, what? Wisdom save. Oh, fuck. Okay. 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 We're missing. Oh, no, we got everybody. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, cool. That's everyone. Yeah, that's everyone. Okay. Um, so here I'm gonna I'm gonna verbally describe to uh, each of you what you feel in your heads. I'll start with the highest roll. So, Pharos, you feel like remember yesterday when you guys walked over to that door and you reached out to open it and something was invading your mind and all of you luckily were able to shove it away. This one. This time, it feels the exact same. You feel like pins and needles, like everything's really loud. And like you have to like grab your head as this awful creature is like charging at you with its like disgusting gibbering and screaming and whining. And you think, oh God, it's coming from this creature. But no, 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 I feel, oh, I feel sick to my stomach just like I did, did yesterday. There's something going on here. Ugh! And you're able to push through it. Um, in the same way, Crevular you feel that same sort of tingling sensation on your skin and you just you use your rage and just slough it off one level below however things are a little different um Tauron, Zeke and Elbalthan um I'll start with the highest Zeke um you get this sort of like ringing in your ears and it gets like really hard to hear Talron as he's speaking to you for a second. And it's like almost like the sound of bells are just like ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing. And like for a second there, you're like sort of uh, just reflexively put your hand to your ears. And then as you do so, it's gone. And you look around and everything is the same. And you're looking at Talron, and Talron is just standing there, and his mouth is open, and he stops talking. His eyes are staring at you. 
And you look over at Elbalthan, and Elbalthan is just standing there, is just not moving, his eyes open and glazed. They're both breathing, but they're not moving. And it's been five seconds, ten seconds. Your hands stop tingling from that wild magic for after about a minute. Anything you want to do, Zeke? Uh, since I'm next to Talron, I'm kind of going to wave in front of his face. Okay. Talron, you, you're kind of lost for a second. It seems like the world is... It's like kind of like a lag spike, in a way. Like, there's like... You remember hearing Zeke, and you remember talking to her, and then all of a sudden, everything slips back to normal, and there's Zeke waving at you in front of your face. It's like... Uh. Something was really weird. What? Elbalthin, the same thing. Like you come too, and you're like, "What the fuck is going on?" Like something's missing. Something's weird. Like you were just standing there for a second, and then you just like zoned out. You don't ever zone out. Like you're an elf. Elves don't like get charmed. They sleep when they need to. And you just like had something really weird fucking happen to you. You guys okay? I. I, I don't know. I, uh, oh, my head. Did you hear that ringing noise? I don't know. I, I didn't hear nothing. We just lost time. Time. You were here. You were standing here, but you were like. I'm just going to flop some... him. Yeah, it was weird. I'm just going to. Let's eat the chimera. I'm just. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> no. Look. I mean, I mean, it's food. Sorry. Continue. What is wrong with you people? I'm just gonna sit Girls down next. Eat. Seriously? Well, at least you might as well just cook it first. But... Well, I mean, I'm of just... course. I'm just gonna Let's sit long down. Let's rest and cook the chimera. I'm down. It hasn't been that long for a long rest. Yeah. It has. I... I'm gonna go. Well, not it quite. Been... It it hasn't been quite. It's been about oh I don't know. Eight or nine hours. It's your last go long rest. Down. I'm gonna go sit down. I feel like I feel like you guys both need it. You uh you took some hits there. Oh yeah, especially. But in hey, fire. we've got a giant corpse blocking the doorway to keep us uh keep us in. So hey, does anyone? With corpse in and can't you like rock wall that or something uh, if i rock wall it it's permanent if i concentrate on it for 10 minutes then we can't get out i mean have your one i could make some uh i could make some shit out of its uh, corpse like maybe a shield or wherever you want i mean we got the time yeah, we got plenty of time just saying I mean, technically i could put my fortress up right here We'd have to move. We'd have to slog the chimera out of the. We'd have to. We'd have to disembowel the chimera first. But once we did that, I could put fortress up. There's just enough space in the. I think. Okay, let's disembowel even... the chimera for food and put the fortress up. Put the fortress up. All right. Can you I'm even use? Can you even wield a shield or no? Uh. Technically, I think I can. Want to double check? Well, because the only reason I say that is because as a warcaster, I have, I can still, it says I can perform somatic components of spells even when I have weapons or a shield in one or both hands, which would tell me that means I can use a shield. But I'm not actually sure because I know I can't use it. Okay. So you guys sort of settle in. And the three of you start to sort of slowly chop parts of the chimera out, determining like, whether or not it could like actually be eaten or not. Or maybe we could get like parts of its body to like maybe at some point probably sell later. Honey? Or I'm I like you know I could use an addition. I have the owl bear rug. I could use a chimera rug in the dress. You could mount all three of their heads on the wall like one. I well, think actually, that <laughs> might actually happen. can't really do that because the dragon head's kind of been split in two. But I mean the lion uh, head's still good. Well, maybe we I think like, except it's got a big head. hole through the top of its nose and the bottom. That's of I'll I'll dress it up with a bow. I'm definitely putting the or lion maybe head I, on my wall. Well, maybe for the dragon when I could like scoop out its eyes or something like that. <laughs> I'm down with scooping out its eyes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
They could be valuable. We we salvage all craftable parts of the game. So as the three of you decide to have this wonderful conversation about swooping eyes (laughs) and disemboweling monsters, you, I think the three of you share a, a, a sentiment, actually two sentiments. One, that at least the three of you, um, you've grown a little closer over these last nine hours. And whether you guys know it amongst each other or not, all three of you feel a little bit more like this place is kind of like home. And now we're going to switch back very briefly for our final little thing with Pharos <coughs> and, uh, and Crevular. As this creature, this gibbering creature, is sort of lancing down the, the corridor towards you, just screeching and gibbering. Crevular, you see this thing, um, and it's... Uh, <laughs> It's uh, pretty. It's awful looking. I mean, it's the worst thing ever. Um, but you know, what can you expect? Uh, what do you want to do, Crevula? I'm going to give you one uh, action as this thing is running towards Pharaoh. I'm going to go out on a limb here really really far off and just he's gonna say hello <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh nerthios looks at this thing sort of screaming and rampaging down the hallway what does it say hmm, that's a good one that's a hard question um looks tasty <laughs> Okay, and Pharos, what do you say either to yourself or to Zeril as this thing is running down the hallway at you? Do I know what this is? Make an Arcana check. It's entirely possible 21 fails, I don't know. Uh, I don't see your Arcana check in here. It says 21. It's a 21. Yeah. Oh, okay. 21, yeah, there it is. That's because I have to say it's entirely possible it fails, though. I mean, I don't, I don't fucking know what No, 21 is, is good enough. Okay. So it's actually pretty good, actually. You know what this creature is, and of all of the creatures that you have encountered in your travels, although this may not be the necessarily the most powerful, it makes you shudder with fear in what it once was. This creature is known as a gibbering bowther. Um, I will showcase to at least those of you uh, who are still in game as to what it is. It'll be up in the the post, I'm sure, uh, coming coming soon. But a gibbering mouther, um, if any of you guys in chat are Critical Role fans, there was a river of gibbering mouthers. Some of the previous, uh, relatively previous uh, uh, episodes of that, where a gibbering mouther is essentially a creature that is made from. Oh man, how do I explain it best? It's made from awful, um, arcane experiments um, that have subsumed the lives of multiple people and has turned them into this sort of mass of flesh and bone and teeth and eyes and sentience that a single creature's um, presence does not exist in this creature. It is a conglomeration of multiple essences. And what it does, although it has been created before and failed experiment or not, what it does is when it consumes you, your very essence becomes part of it. And you, like all the others before you, are now part of the part of the mountains of madness in 
inside this creature. Do you have anything to say? Let's say to Zero. That's a lot of eyes I have. Zero says, I'm not worried about the eyes, sir. It's, it's all the teeth. Oh, no, that's not. That'll be fine. He looks at you, like, with this look of, are you shitting me? <laughs> and that's where we're going to end for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they all going to die. <laughs> so that's it, folks. Um, we, of course, will end with our favorite way of saying goodbye. Um, our uh, Dungeon uh, of the Mad Mage advertisements. Uh, set to the fantastic episode musical ambiance of uh, Halister Black Cloak. Uh, go ahead and uh, since you were the last uh, to go here, uh, Ferris, why don't you uh, give me two D100 rolls, please? No. I don't think that was a request, Clarum. <laughs> I think it was a command. Oh, wait, you're looking at me? No, I was talking to Pharaoh oh. since he was the last person oh. to talk. I'm sorry, what do you want me to roll? D100s, please. <laughs> D100s, two of them, please. I think he failed on that wisdom saving throw. No, <laughs> you jerkweed. I, I failed on the wisdom saving throw. I was zoned out. So zoned. Two D100, not two D100, but two 1D100 rolls. I mean, it's a 59 and 70. Yeah, I'll take the 59 and the 70. You know what? I'll do that because I'm, you're, you're I'm right a nice guy. All right, so this episode, <clears throat> as we fade out, the sort of image of Halister Blackcloak and his like crazed wild eyes uh, appears in front of the of the camera, and his sort of hair flows, and he says, uh, "Tonight's episode was brought to you by uh, the Eye of Vecna. The Eye of Vecna has been stolen. Trust none. Pray to your gods. And by." 70. Uh, <laughs> this is great. And by Wolfburger Lord. Uh, lawsuits alleging Wolfburger Lord seeds its cuisine with subpar ingredients or evocation spells are simply unfounded. And to celebrate the settlement offer, Wolfburger Lord is offering a two for the price of one deal. So come in and enjoy a Wolfburger Deluxe at half the cost, limited time offer only, maximum one party per transaction. That's all the time we have for tonight on Dungeon of the Mad Mage. We'll see you again next week. Have a crazy fucking week y'all and enjoy yourselves and that's all we've got time for tonight uh back to normal here folks let's go ahead and say good night to our wonderful people who have stayed in chat um and of course we want to say goodbye go ahead and we'll start up here on the top left sarah uh who are you and where can people find you on the internet I am Sarah, and you can find me on the interwebs on Twitter and Instagram under Lovely Llama, which should be down underneath me somewhere. Uh, oh. Photos of cats, photos of food, photos of things I create, and that's basically it. Yes, watch me make shit; it's fun. I'm looking forward to that cosplay. To be honest, it'll be, as soon as I features. figure out what it's going to be, it'll be cool, cool, cool. Down here to, in the bottom left, we have Scepter. Scepter, where are where can people find you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter at Kane Rano at Twitter, where I post random shenanigans and more shenanigans. We like shenanigans, but not too many shenanigans, because then you get pistol whipped. Down here in the bottom yeah. here, we got Dracon. Dracon, where can people find you on the internet, man? You can find me on the internet. On Twitter, in fact, at Overlord underscore Dracon. That's right. I said it right this time. We're good with that. I am the Edgelord Supreme. With cheese. With cheese. Wolfburger, Wolfburger so Lord cheese? Wolfburger Lord cheese, maybe? Nah. No. I don't use wolf meat. <sighs> For lowly peasants and cheapies. We like, we like wolves. We just don't like to eat them. I will answer. Yeah, it's just Chimera. <laughs> uh, bottom right, we got Craw. Craw, where can people find you on the internet? Man? I'm sorry, Matt. Don't hit me anymore. Okay, I won't, it's right uh, there. It's right there. <laughs> so, stop! 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 stop. <laughs>
It's right there. <laughs> brother, no. It's all good. It's all at, good. At, brother. At Crawferos. We're good. Save me. He's in the darkness. That, that I'll play, save you, brother. He's, 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 like, he just disappears in the darkness. It freaks me out. Um, <laughs> top right, Alex, where can people find you on the internet, man? Twitter. At algorithm with a one and zero. Butte. Algorithm with a one and a zero. That's all the time we have for this week, but join us again next week where the party continues to get into their own craziness on level two and level three, and who knows, maybe they'll find their own little adventures by themselves, or maybe they'll one day find some way of getting back together. I hope so. They will have to find their own tanks. <laughs> no, no, it just won't happen. Uh, you know they say never split the party? They, they say, never split the party, right? Well, you guys have proven them all wrong. Because you split the party. <laughs> proven them wrong. <laughs> I mean, I tried not to split the party. I mean, we all tried different things. You know, it was three I against two. Actually, there's a lot more of us up here than there are down there with you. For now. <laughs> <laughs> Party-wise, there's two of you. That's true. The, the, your companions, I'm just going to whittle yes. down the NPCs one by one until there's just two of you left. We're just going to keep bringing in more. No, this no. I will kill them all off. Everyone? I will kill every single NPC off until there are none left except the two of you guys left. And that's all I have to say <laughs> about that. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great rest of the night. We love you. Have a wonderful time. The rest of the week, we'll see you on Tuesday again next week. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye